everyone, it is Prodigy Rex here, back with another read aloud. Today, I'll be reading chapter 6 to 10 of Benji Franklin Kidzillionaire Money Troubles. So let's get to it. Chapter 6, Security Glitch. I should have known the second I answered the call that, that she was in my office because she was sitting at my desk. But I was so distracted by the giant squid, I turned the bank on it. When it was clear that the squid was gone, I said, How come you're in my storage closet? Roger, I found I followed you the other day after you answered the call, Cindy said. You disappeared so quickly that it didn't make sense. I knew you had to sneak away somewhere. But the only way you, to open that door is by handprint recognition, I said. I wouldn't say that's the only way, she said, but, but how I got here isn't important. The important thing is that I found your hideout, and now I'm going to tell the principal and finally get you in trouble. I hate to break it to you, Cindy, but Mrs. Penny knows about my office. If you could tell her if she likes, but but she, she just wants to know how you got inside when I have top-of-the-line security protecting it. That's breaking and entering. Last time I checked, Cindy, Cindy replied, the school is public property. Why should I be able to use your real to have my own own office? I told you already, I'm kind of a superhero. I need a really cool hideout. I'm telling you, she said, I'm hang up. What was that all about? I wish I knew, she said. You have a secret office at school? Just as he fishing the work, the ground, Alan, Alan the, uh, vibrated and shook violently. If I had not the sea, sea floor been lifted and shaken, we wouldn't have felt the earthquake and the submarine as much as we saw the sea floor vibrate. We need to get to, back to the island, I said. Saunders, what happened? It appears there is another earthquake. That's what I thought. Hey, why are you letting Cindy hack into my computer? I, I asked. I try to stop her, sir, but she's quite clever. I hit the turbo jets and we were back in the island in a minute. The Prime Minister was already there and me at the job. We climbed in the street. Dad sat in the front and I, I sat in the back. We drove, we drove, we drove uh, into the night. The island was so dark that it reminded me of the bottom of the ocean. The cloud was cloudy and what is the star in the sky? The only sound um, was the complete uh, sound of the breeze as we rolled along. I, was co I lost completely lost track of time while we, we were in the sun. It must have been the middle of the night. The lights are out again, I asked. We can't keep the power up and running with all the vibrations for the earthquakes. I don't, I don't even want to know what happened if the, the island on the volcano if it, the volcano erupted. Maybe we should have a closer look. As you wish, she said. I never seen a volcano in real life before. Right, as, as we, as we began our climb up the mountainside, I got my first glimpse. Gray smoke puffed out of the top of, of, uh, and stood somehow uh, against the pitch black sky. It reminded me of the hydrothermal vents on the side of the seafloor. We were driving uh, along a narrow winding road leading up to, to the top of the volcano while, while the, when the ground started to shake. The Prime Minister pulled the jeep to the side of the road and waited for the shaking to pass. It was pretty scary. It felt like we were on a bug of a windowsill trying to hold for, on for dear life. My heart raced like crazy. We had two more big quakes just before you arrived this evening. These ones were bigger than the one we had right now, he said. While we were talking, the vibrations got worse. The jib bounced so hard that I might slide off the road. It's not safe to go any further, but, but you can get a picture, Mr. Franklin. If the volcano erupts, the town below is in terrible danger. We drove up slowly down the road that led up to the volcano. I knew that it was possible that the earthquakes of the volcano and smoke still was starting to was something natural, but I had a feeling something else was going on. As we drove around the island, I noticed people seemed to be outside everywhere, even though it was super late. They were afraid to sleep inside, the Prime Minister said. They said, afraid their houses would collapse on them in the light. It's safer to sleep outside. None of us, us said anything and got to drive to the Prime Minister's house. Earlier, I felt excited to be staying in, at the home of the country of the leader, but now all the people were sleeping outside made me feel kind of guilty. I was so tired, though, I, as soon as I hit the pillow, I fell into a deep sleep and dreamed about uh, volcanoes, earthquakes, hydrothermal vents, and, and giant squid. My mind was picturing different vent the vents, the sun's computer recording the temperature of, of, of the of the water coming out of the vents at 750 degrees, a steady flow of hot water. I know even my dream that somehow I'm used for all that energy. In the morning, I woke to my bed vibrating like crazy. The house had been shaken by an invisible giant. If I didn't know the house could collapse at any moment, it would have been kind of fun. 
Dad and I rushed in. We felt on the floor because we were shaking off. Benji, you know, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just waking up. This is the third one this morning. He, he, when you slept through the other two. I can't believe that I slept through two earthquakes. Also, your phone has been ringing all morning. You want to check it? The vibration stopped and, and I, I sat at the end of the bed holding his head. I was checking who it was. I was hoping it was Sir Robert. I secretly wanted him to come in the island and help me out. I was feeling a little overwhelmed by, by all the pressure to find a solution. It wasn't Sir Robert, though. It was Cindy. She called three times and the phone was ringing. Chapter 7 Zillionaire 55 I almost didn't answer, but I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything important at school. Why haven't you answered the phone, she said. Good morning to you, too. I said, it's the middle of the night here, she, 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 she explained. We're in different time zones. What's so important? Why did you have me waking up and you're in the middle of the night? I know, I, I think I know what, what the island has been causing the earthquake, she said. It's the captain. How do you know about the captain, I asked. Come on, Benji, you're supposed to be a genius, aren't you? I thought for a second. Cindy had access to my office. My office? I asked. Yep, I'm not there now, of course, but I have remote access from my house. How'd you do that? You need to be a bit more creative with, with your passwords, Cindy said. I mean, I guess Zillionaire wasn't very difficult to guess. You could have worked in a few capital letters or gone, gone something like Zillionaire 55. It lacks imagination. I couldn't believe what she was saying. Did you? Did she have access to my emails, my texts, my phone? You just can't hack into my stuff like that, I said. I mean, it wasn't very nice of me, but you see, it was fun. But you want to point it out, I'm not always that nice. But what was important right now, Benji, is that I, I did a little research on the captain. His name is Sigmund Norway. No, and I said, he's not a sea captain, but he's also not a scientist. He's from a northern Yoko out Alaska. He owns a company that drills into the urban and takes samples from miners, so they know if there's gold in the ground before they mine. It hit me all at once. The reason for the earthquakes and the volcano, he's drilling into the sea floor and causing the earthquake, I said. I think so, Chris. He left out that part when he was talking to you. How did you know that? Thanks to the technology in your office, I, I have access to the sub cameras in your sub. He, show, he showed you the, the robots out vacuum in the sea floor, but I bet he's drilling somewhere down there too. I was furious at Cindy, Cindy, but I was also thankful for her help. There was also something strange about the captain all along that I couldn't figure out. Is that everything I said? Yeah, school has been pretty slow. You haven't much much. You really should 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 get going before for another quick that's it. Benji Cindy said, I can log out of your system if you want. I'm just amazed when you told me where you are and what your dad doing. I just couldn't visit when what you do. I just couldn't visit. I, I rushed from it's okay, so I probably would, would have done done the same thing if I was in your situation. I'm going to need all the help I can get. Just don't eat all my candy, I, I won't. I'm not making any promises, she said. Chapter eight The Drill if someone asked me before that I, I'd, on this mission I would be asking Cindy for help, I'd have never believed it. But what if she asked this new, the captain was true, it might just help me stop the earthquakes. Then I ro rode back to the shore with the Prime Minister. I, I think I think I have new information about what might be causing the earthquakes. Let's go, he said. I'm dying to check out your sub the moment your gentleman arrived. Uh, on the way to the, out to the captain's ship, I explained to the Prime Minister what Cindy is saying. She even suddenly linked to the captain's website. Well, on the homepage, page was a, a picture of him offering a giant drool, giving give a thumbs up. Minutes later, we arrived at the dock, the ship and dock. The captain was on the deck checking the gold in the wash plane. He shut off the engine as we, as we came aboard and threw the, uh, a cover over the gold on the table. He didn't look very happy to, to see the Prime Minister. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister, he said. Hi, hi, Sigmund, the prince said. The captain's face went, went white. How do you know my name is Sigmund? We know a lot more than that, I said. We know you own a drilling company. So, the so, the prince said. I gave you permission to map the seafloor. My feeling you're doing a lot more more than than that. Than that. He's mining the seafloor because it's loaded with gold and other precious metals. I, I planned on sharing the profits with the island, the captain said. Are you drilling into the sea for us? Because if you are, it could be the cause of the quakes. Of course not, he said. Think carefully, the Prime Minister said. If I find out you're lying and putting the people of my island at risk, I'll have you arrested. The captain paused for a long moment and then said, Let's head back down. There's something you need you should see. We all climbed aboard the sub and made my descent to the bottom. The captain guided us to the surface section of the sea where he hadn't shown us before. 
A massive machine rested there. It looked like an underwater skyscraper. So it's so hard that it, it's in the darkness. I couldn't even, unless it's full power, could see the top. This is my drill. I've been getting so much gold on the sea floor that I set the drill down to hope there'd be even more. Why didn't you stop when you saw it was causing the earthquakes? I asked. They didn't happen every time I drilled. I, I figured that if I kept trying, I, I'd find spots that didn't cause the earthquakes. But it's been hard to predict. You realize that that if the volcano on the island erupts, people could be killed? They kept talking, but I couldn't hear the words anymore. I, I was looking at the at the massive drill and the hydrodrome events popping up the block of material. An idea started to take shape. It all swirled in my mind at once. The hydrodrome events, the super hot water, the, the power problems on the island, the gold... It didn't know how much time passed, but after what that's funny, are you listening to us? And I snapped out of daydream. I have a solution to the problems, I said. Which problems? The Prime Minister asked. All of them, I said. I hopped on my computer and, and worked out the plan. The Prime Minister and the Captain were arguing, but I didn't stop listening. I was in the zone. I put together a materials list and started working on the price. That steered the, the ship back to the surface. 15,000 meters of heat resistant piping, $2,878,000, 500 steel fans, $434,000, expanded wash plant, $654,000, 20 miles of high voltage electric cabling, $1,327,000, steel platform, $2,898,000. Three barges with crews, one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Totally cost for the project, nine million four nine hundred forty one thousand dollars. Twenty percent consulting fee, one million nine hundred nine hundred eighty eight thousand two hundred dollars. Total amount due, eleven million nine hundred twenty nine thousand two hundred dollars. Notable refund deposit, two thousand ounces of gold. Chapter nine, the plan. When you reach the surface. I had the whole plan worked out. I printed the bill and handed this to the captain. What's this? He said. You called me to find a solution to your problem. I solved it. If the prime minister agrees, we should be able to keep you out of jail. He wouldn't really have me arrested, he said there nervously. Yes, I would, the prime minister said. You lied to the people in my and mine to see for and drilled illegally. I intend to have you arrested unless Benji convinced me otherwise. My plan does a few things, I said. First, if the captain agrees to stop drilling the cause of the earthquake and wants to drink, so hopefully the earthquake will stop too. He looks at the captain. Agreed, he said. Second, we'll put in place heat resistance piping all over the hydrothermal vents. As the super hot water moves through the pants, it will turn hundreds of, of fans into pipes. The energy from the turning fans and an intensity will generate enough energy on on, on the large barge. Will wire the electricity to the island. You will have more electricity than you can imagine. I love the Prime Minister. I like the sound of that, he said. Third, third, the black material that flows out of the hydrothermal vents is loaded with gold and other valuable materials. It will be run through a wash plant at the surface, mined safely without any drilling or vacuum, I answered a bit. The captain will have shared profits he makes with the metals of the island, of course. Of course, I'll take 20% as a fee. They all look this, this, in, in dispute. In this belief, you figured out all where we were underwater. The captain said, "I started getting the idea last night while I was stuck, but it's only four minutes before." Who's playing for such an expensive project? The, the prime minister said, "He is." I said, pointing at the captain. The key looked making my friend. Why am I paying for this? He said, "You're the one who started the whole thing. You're the reason for the earthquakes and the power outages. The least you can do is fix the problem." I have to run it by my business partner. He said, "I didn't realize you have a business partner. I I, I thought that you're all here all alone." I asked. I am, but I have a partner too. Who? Get your partner on the phone, the Prime Minister said, and, and, and make sure you understand that if you don't do this, you're, he's, you're heading to jail. I hear a loud and cloud, the captain said. After a short call, the, the captain hung up and we agreed to all the terms. My partner is going to work, work on getting the materials dish. Things should start arriving tomorrow. That night, I was so excited I could hardly see. The next day, the materials started to come, and all the massive crew of construction crew and engineers arrived at the scene. They worked around the clock for almost a week straight. Toward the end of the week, we were ready to run the first test. The sun set, and the island was completely dark. We removed the old power grid and replaced it with the new wiring that connected the hydrothermal vent on the rig. We all stood on the deck of the ship and waited for the engineer to give the thumbs up. When he did, I pressed a large green button on the pl on the engine room. I, it, it opened the pump down to the to the mouth of the sea floor. Super hot water from the vent raced up the pipe and spinning the fans along the way. 
the water buzzed with excitement. The needles on the control panel started to move, and the entire rig actually vibrated of, of the combination of water, heat, and electricity zooming, zooming up through the system. Um, the dark material from the, from the vents started pumping up the, through the captain's equipment. It washed the, the materials and captured any gold and other resources materials. The extra sand and rock was simply pumped to the side and fell back to the bottom of the sea. After a few minutes, the, the system was at full power. The lights from the houses and the streetlights on, on the island blinked a few times and then came on for good. I thought the Prime Minister was going to cry. He, I, he loved the captain and cheered everyone. Um, it was a pretty amusing feeling. I was so happy to help the island save it from the earthquakes that it would have co continued if we, that would have continued if if, if that the captain hadn't stopped drilling. The whole atmosphere on the ship felt like one big party. Chapter ten, homeward. The, the prime minister and the uh, the people on the island were thrilled. We meant to stop the earthquakes and sell the volcano. As a bonus, the new system provided free electrical power to, uh, to the island. As a double bonus, the power from oil was also a precious metal mine. The island the island was a much better ship than we arrived. The next day, we had a big they had a big festival to celebrate the end of the earthquakes and the beginning of a safe future. The prime minister invited Dad and me to be guests as honor, but but it was time time to leave, head for home. We've been gone too long, and Mom was getting worried. And Mrs. Penny wasn't wasn't happy about how much school I missed. On the flight home, I got a call from Sir Robert. Hi, Ben. Do you, he said, "Where were you?" I wonder what I wondered the same about you. I said, "What do you mean, lad?" He said, "I mean, I, you said I said you sent me, Dad, and me in the middle of the Atlantic to handle the biggest challenge of my life, and then you went on vacation." I knew you'd be able to handle the task. He said, "Even though I was on holiday, I knew you were you." you. I, I I knew what what was go, going with you the whole time. How did you hack into my computers too? Of course not. Sigmund kept me up to date every step of the way. He did. I don't understand. We're partners. He's a very good very good at the mechanical aspect of things, but he doesn't involve anything involving money unless he checks in with me first. This situation, this the solution of yours cost me a pretty penny. I found out a little suspicious that Sir Robert would mix up with someone as dishonest as the captain, and, and that he kept it from me. And I would have thought, thought he would have told me earlier. It made, made me a little more sense what else he was telling me. I, I said goodbye and shut my phone. I need a break from everything. It felt good to head home. I was still thinking about Sir Robert as Dad and I re-entered the atmosphere about an hour later. I was glad he, he had faith in me to solve the problem on my own, but I couldn't stop wondering if he knew that the captain was up to this in the hotel and simply sent me up to there to clean up the mess. He cruised the captain to near the house and then dropped us up. The same people we waved to on the way out were still there again. I wondered if they'd been so shocked the last time they saw me in, in the space they were frozen there and haven't left. We flew to, to the farm where fa Mom waited, and we 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 flew towards the hangar. I felt so good that, that to be home. Mom gave me a big hug and kiss when we go out of the space. I can't believe that you've been gone so long. Oh, she says. I know that's it was a long trip. You usually wouldn't believe it. I'm proud of your son. I'm always proud of him. Said pinching his cheeks. He saved an entire island thanks to him. That they don't have to worry about the earthquakes anymore. And how, and, the, and how, or how they're gonna power the island anymore? Mom and Dad and I talked a, a bit some more of what, while I was unloading our luggage. Then I started to unload the gold. The captain had given me two thousand ounces as part of our payment, as we agreed. It was so much gold I could hardly believe. What is this, Mom? As as to hold a massive amount of gold from from the ship. It's the gold from the mission. I have two thousand ounces here. I said I figured we we could sell it and, and put the money toward the farm. Mom looked like her jaw might hit the floor. Benjamin Franklin. Benji Franklin, you're an amazing boy. I'm, I might just start s stitching your cape, she said. A cape, I said. A lot of you superheroes wear them, she said. And she gave me a hug. I didn't think I was ready for a cape yet, but I think I, I feel the idea might just grow on me. Notice of payment. From B Benjamin Benji Franklin to Captain Sigmund Norway. 15,000 meters of heat resistant piping, $2,878,000. 500 steel fans, $434,000. Expanded wash plant, $654,000. 20 miles of, of high of high voltage electrical cabling and wiring, $1,377,000. Steel platform, $2,898,000. Three barges with crews, one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Total cost for project, nine million nine hundred forty-one thousand dollars. 
20% consulting fee, one million nine hundred eighty-eight thousand two hundred dollars. Total amount due, eleven million nine hundred twenty-nine thousand two hundred dollars. Paid. Notable refund deposit, two thousand ounces of gold. Payment due upon receive. And that is the end of chapters five to ten of Benji Franklin and Kid Zillionaire. I hope you enjoy uh, and stay tuned for more books. Pudgerex out.